Hello again! Welcome to another episode of Sipnayan Hub, a newly created channel mainly to assist students in their mathematics and statistics courses. In the last video, we've been discussing patterns and sequences. We already presented the different number patterns, which includes the arithmetic sequence, geometric sequence, and the Fibonacci sequence. In this video, we will be talking about the other types of patterns. Stay tuned. But before we continue, do not forget to like this video, hit the subscription and notification bell to stay updated of future videos. First in our list are logic patterns. If you still recall the patterns we presented at the beginning of the first part of this video, those are actually examples of a logic pattern. The items that you met in an IQ or aptitude test, or perhaps the questions you encounter during your college qualifying examination are similar to logic patterns. Here is another example of a logic pattern. So if we observe this one, it has two parts. So it has these lines inside the square. Each square has the lines in the curves, the circles. So we observe that at the first picture, the lines are just like that. And then in the second image or picture, it's like that. And they move like that. So it's actually like a hand, the hands of a, of a clock. So that at the next image, the hand of the clock should be like that. How about the circles? Well, from a full circle, it progresses like that, moving counterclockwise. So the next image here should be this one. Yep, this one. Patterns can also be observed in words. For example, the way we pluralize or identify the plural forms of nouns might form a pattern. The words knife, wife, life, or the words that ends with fe can actually be pluralized in the same manner. That is, by changing the parts fe to ves. So knife becomes knives, wife becomes wives, and life becomes lives. Also, when we change the tenses of verbs, for example, for words that ends with Y, like fry, cry, try, we simply make them in past tense by changing Y to I, E, D. And that is a pattern. We can also observe word patterns in your favorite poems. For example, in the poem, The coolness of the night refreshes my skin. The stars shine so bright, causing me to grin. In this poem, the last word for the first and third lines have the same rhymes. And the last words of the second and the fourth lines also have the same rhyme. This is why the rhyming for this particular paragraph is called AB AB. Here is a part of another poem with different rhyming pattern. The pattern is ABCB. This means that only the second and the fourth lines have a rhyming last words all and four for this paragraph of another poem the rhyming pattern is a a b b this means that the first two lines have the same rhymes and then the last two lines have the same rhyming pattern day way and air hair Here's another pattern, 
it's A, B, C, D. It's actually the same with the second one. Just like your regular poems, a haiku or a Japanese poem of 17 syllables in three lines of 575, which traditionally evokes images of the natural world, can also exhibit a word pattern. Here is an example. If we're going to count the number of syllables in each line, it is always 575. Five. An old silent pond. That's five syllables for you. A frog jumps into the pond. That's seven. Splash. Silence again. That's five. So it it's really five, a 575 uh, poem. Here's another example. A mountain village. That's five. Under the piled up snow. That's seven. The sound of water. Again, five. Five, seven, five. Patterns are also observable in the visible world. For instance, Snowflakes, as it falls from the sky, grows into a fascinating pattern. In fact, no two snowflakes are exactly the same. Accordingly, this different snowflake pattern allows meteorologists to identify specific forecasts like cloud formation, snowfalls, and tornadoes. Another example of a pattern are the different coloration of, of fishes which is useful to the fish in different ways color can camouflage or hide a fish from its predator and prey for example a blue fish might want to match its blue water background or a darker one in the deeper parts of the water color and shape pattern are most definitely found in land animals as well. This peacock, for example, have large feather with bright colors that almost resemble an eye. This lizard, on the other hand, have a coloration of greenish to blackish scales. Researchers believe that these scale colors switches depending on the color of the environment. Giraffes. Giraffe spot patterns are believed to be passed on from their mothers. This would increase the survival rates of young giraffes because predators might identify them as their mothers. Giraffes skin color is uniformly dark gray but their spots may vary in color. The zebra's black and white stripe coloring also allows them to hide from predators. It is also believed that the unique skin pattern of a zebra helps them distinguish one another. It's some sort of an identity for these zebras. Another interesting pattern that we can see in nature are the honeycombs built by bees. These honeycombs are hexagonal in shapes. The spider web is an architecture built by a spider. The spider first creates lines that moves outward from the center, and then the spider strengthens it by making a thread around it. Its structure allows the spider to capture its prey. Turtles, on the other hand, have growth rings called scutes, which are hexagonal in shape. These scutes estimates the age of a turtle. Turtles with smaller scoots in the center are the older ones, while those with larger scoots on the outside are generally younger. Patterns can also be seen in foam bubbles, specifically on the shape of the bubbles that encloses gas. The cracks on the tree barks are a pattern on itself. Also, the curves of a mending river or a river that snakes back and forth through a gently sloping field are roughly circular. It appears that these features 
of these rivers have geometric relations. And we are now down to our last pattern. It's called a geometric pattern. And this is actually one of the conclusions of the patterns that we observed in nature and in our environment in general. The first type of geometric pattern that we will be talking about is called symmetries. And one specific type of a symmetry is called a reflection or a bilateral symmetry. For a reflection, one half or one part of, a, of an object reflects the other one. So for example, in this tiger's face, if we're going to put a vertical line there, we see that the right part of the face reflects the left part of the tiger's face. Here is another illustration of a reflection. For this, is this a butterfly? If we're going to put a vertical line there, we see that the left part is a reflection of the other, or the right part is a reflection of the left part. This is an example of a bilateral symmetry, or we call it a reflection. Here is another type of symmetry. We call it radial symmetry or rotational symmetry. And we call it rotational symmetry because it preserves how an object looks even after rotating it. This means that an object possesses rotational symmetry if it looks just the same with the original one even after rotating it at a certain degree. So this image here is an example of an object that possesses rotational symmetry because it looks just the same even after rotating it, specifically after rotating it 90 degrees. Here is another example of an object that possesses rotational symmetry. It is actually called a five-point star and it goes back to its original look after rotating it 72 degrees. Here is a seven-point star. It goes back to its original look or position after rotating it approximately 51.43 degrees. In nature, we can actually identify actual objects that possess rotational symmetry. For example, we have a three-petal flower. If you're going to rotate this flower, it looks the same after 120 degrees rotation. You have your jellyfish. It's the same. It's identical after rotating it 90 degrees. Also, you have your starfish. After rotating it 72 degrees, it goes back to its original look. Let us move on to the next type of a geometric pattern, fractals. Fractals are geometric patterns formed by shrinking or magnifying itself in making it a part of itself. This means that the object with fractal properties looks the same no matter how much you zoom it in or zoom it out. One of the most famous illustrations of fractal is called the Serpent Case Triangle. This fractal starts with a single triangle. A similar triangle is then shrink and becomes part of itself by coinciding the vertices of the smaller triangle to the midpoints of the sides of the larger triangle. This process is repeated until we actually couldn't. We can as well observe the properties of fractals in objects that we see in nature. For example, each part of the broccoli head is similar to the whole head. The pups or baby cacti looks similar to the mother plant it is attached to. Fractals are even observed in human physiology. 
the branching of blood vessels, such as your arteries and veins, exhibit self-similarity. Like your veins, the lightning, as it branches outward, forms fractal. Another type of a geometric pattern is called a spiral. Spirals are formed by moving away a point from a center in a circular manner. Here are some objects with a spiral property. Most succulents grow their leaves in a spirally manner. The shell's covering is shaped like a spiral. Even the movement of hurricanes and galaxies display a spiraling behavior. This concludes the different types of patterns. Thank you for listening and see you in the next video.